Next on Newsmax Prime, he asked if they were Christian. The killer at an Oregon community college and the reality of evil in this modern age. Then, presidential politics. Despite his frontrunner status, Donald Trump says there is one thing that would lead him to withdraw from the race. Find out what it is. Plus, Hillary Clinton burning through her campaign cash, and she's probably burning mad about Ed Klein's new book. We'll visit with the author and conclude my exclusive interview with John Kasich. Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening. Welcome to the Friday night edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth of Prime Interest Tonight, the aftermath of evil. There's no other way to describe that mass shooting yesterday in Oregon or the way in which the killer carried out his despicable deeds. Miranda Kahn has more from our newsroom. Miranda? J.D., students understandably are still in shock following yesterday's senseless shooting at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon. Officers have now identified the shooter as 26-year-old Chris Harper Mercer. Witnesses say Mercer went in targeting Christians. If they were Christian, they were shot in the head. But if they stated other or didn't answer, they were shot in the leg. Police say Mercer came to the campus equipped with six guns and a bulletproof vest. Police say he was later shot dead by responding officers after exchanging gunfire. Investigators later found seven additional guns at his home. Mercer's family members reacted to the news with disbelief. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound like something he would have to go through. He, he didn't have to go through that. But the shooter's alleged MySpace page tells a different story. His profile picture shows him isolated with a gun and a very stoic look on his face. And his other pictures show sympathy towards the Irish Republican Army, the parliamentary group fighting for Northern Ireland's independence. That same group is also associated with the assassination attempt on then-British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher back in 1984. His list of friends? Only two. And on other social media sites, Mercer described himself as a non-religious person and against organized religion. Mercer also identified himself as a conservative Republican. Neighbors describe him as unfriendly. They say he wore the same combat boots, green army pants, and white t-shirt every day, while fellow bus riders recount him as being withdrawn and looking very anxious. Police are now investigating what sent this troubled individual over the edge or if he has any connections to any extremists. Investigators say it is too soon to identify an, a motive, and the Douglas County Sheriff's Office says there wasn't any specific warning signs attached to the alleged shooter. This latest mass killing has once again reignited the battle over gun control, with President Obama being accused by some of politicizing this tragedy. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. For more on this story, we are pleased to be joined via Skype with the director of the Christian Worldview Center at North Greenville University in South Carolina, Dr. Alex McFarland. Dr. McFarland is also the author of the book, The God You Thought You Knew, exposing the 10 biggest myths about Christianity. And joining me here on the anchor desk, former Secret Service agent and security advisor, Branch Walton. Dr. McFarland, first to you, sir. Uh, the fact that the shooter targeted Christians and shot them execution style. Your reaction mm. to this? Well, it's uh, tragic, it's sad, and l let me say, uh, before we uh, comment on the implications of this, how our love and condolences go out to the people of Oregon, specifically the families that have been bereaved. It, it, is, it is very sad. Um, but I do want to point out, though, that uh, we are in a culture where for a number of decades now, God has really been pushed out or attempted to be pushed out of the public consciousness. Young people can't be told about the Ten Commandments and commandment number six that says, Thou shalt not kill. And from the uh, Dylan Roof in June shooting the people in North Charleston to, you know, exactly one month ago, there was the, uh, the reporter and cameraman that were shot and killed in Virginia. And now this, uh, I really believe that one of the answers, one of the answers that we must do is we must reintroduce God and a positive view of God and the Ten Commandments, morality, into the public conversation and into the awareness of, of young people. 
Alex, you cited other uh, examples of uh, mass shootings. Uh, here on the anchor desk, Branch Walton, as we take a look at this, and now all the studying on the alleged killer and all the troubling threads in social media, is there any way to predict what might send someone over the edge to engage in an action like this? I predict, you can always predict, but that doesn't mean it's going to be right. I personally think the... Uh Probably the, and I agree with Dr. McFarland and his comments, but I think probably the biggest uh, thing we should concentrate on from the prevention side is number one, awareness education. Uh, in this case, school personnel, not only the uh, principal, superintendents, presidents of universities, but the students, the parents, the uh, the neighborhood, and so forth. The warning signs are there, uh, and we just have to learn to pick up on them. But I like to add, just because a person has those alleged warning signs doesn't mean they're going to do it. So we can predict, but prediction involves reading the human mind, and that's the most difficult part. Our president has weighed in on this tragedy. As Miranda mentioned, there are those of us who say he's trying to make this a political issue. Let's listen to what the president had to say and then get the reaction of our two guests. This is a political choice that we make. To allow this to happen every few months in America. We collectively are answerable to those families who lose their loved ones because of our, our inaction. Alex, I need to ask you about this. The president accused of politicizing this. Is, uh, is he playing politics with this tragedy? Well, uh, yeah, this president has used every opportunity that's come his way to leverage current events for political gain or attempted political gain. Uh, I would say the people that are answerable to the bereaved families are the politicians like our president who have twisted uh, the public understanding of morality, have tried to send a message that there are no moral absolutes, marriage can be redefined, uh, human life uh, is cheap and can be uh, aborted and done so with taxpayer dollars. And look, the fact is this, uh, the Founding Fathers built this country on belief in God, belief in the Ten Commandments. Dr. King uh, called it our Judeo-Christian heritage. Now, uh, the ACLU and, and the American Humanist Association, People for the American Way, and leftist academicians and leftist politicians have uh, tried to make us believe that if we recognize God, we've somehow violated the First Amendment, which is absolutely not true. First Amendment doesn't abolish belief in morality. Uh, and and you can still express in the marketplace uh, your beliefs, and you're right, there's been a growing debate and confusion on sure. that, Alex, but there is one thing sure. very clear in retrospect, uh, Branch, what we saw at the community college there in Oregon. Although by statute, students and others could carry concealed weapons, that particular community college was a, quote, gun-free zone. Does that basically mark institutions as, uh, as security risks? We've got about 40 seconds. I think there are mixed emotions, and sometimes a, a political point of view. I have my own personal opinion, but I, 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 it's a controversial issue, uh, J.D., and, and I don't think I have the answer to that. I don't really know. Well, in terms of security, the number one thing, Branch, that parents, students, everyone should remember? Uh, Education, awareness, becoming aware. The warning signs are there. You are the medium. You're the conduit for passing it on to people who can do something about it. Uh, do I have time to mention a couple websites for them? For the, One uh, website very quickly. Uh, uh, there's uh, ruraltraining.org. There's a lot of free Homeland Security training programs related to school security. That's one to look at. There are many out there. The National Domestic Preparedness Consortium is another area to look at. We will training do so. There. Absolutely. Branch Walton, we thank you for your time here on the desk. And Dr. Alex McFarland, look forward to discussing things with you again in the not-too-distant future. Alex uh, wrote the book, The God you thought you knew. Still to come, in the aftermath of the Oregon shootings, gun control advocates again clamor for change. Our political panel will discuss. Then, the appeal of outsiders in the presidential race. Ohio governor and presidential candidate John Kasich offers his assessment. But first, what would get frontrunner Donald Trump to quit? And why has Hillary burned through so much campaign cash? Betsy McCoy and Ed Klein join us next on Newsmax Prime.